Hello, and welcome to another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in downtown Brevard, North Carolina. And it's Monday, so I'm coming to you from my house. And one of the things I was ready to do today is I, some of my most popular videos, you can see what this is. It's a little upside down because I'm in the middle of the row getting ready for today's video. This is the Papillon Jaw, and I'm in the middle. Some of my most popular videos have been helping you out with the instructions for the red and the orange square. Now you really do need the whole entire pattern to make this work. You cannot take my videos and make the shawl. You need the pattern. There's a lot of counting involved. If you look, all those stitch markers are essential. And I have not been able to do videos on every single step because that gets really close to the whole pattern. I do a class, if you're interested, keeping on the cat in case he gets crazy. I do a class in case you're interested that can walk you through a lot of the basics of getting started. But this is, I did red and orange squares. I thought today we'd do a green square. A green square, wah, as I drop my thing. Red and orange square directions, they're called squares because they're in boxes. They don't look like a square on your piece. They look like what I would call a little teardrop or a bubble. I think I just lost a stitch marker. I'll find that before we continue. That means I have stitches falling off. Um, they look like little teardrops. The green and blue squares are what my assistant Liz calls bowls and hats because it's going to fill this space that is between these other little teardrop bubbles. It's going to start right in the middle. We're going to look at pictures and then we're going to do it. Let's get to it. Okay, so let's start with just some basics to hang on to all this craziness over here. Here's what I wrote down. We're doing the green square. And remember, square just, re just refers to the color box. The color for the box around the instructions. It does not make an actual square shape. The square on the pattern I just cut out the section, but if you look on your instructions on the page that says, I would suggest cutting the bottom of this page off and using it as a guide when you knit, there is a box with instructions inside of it. And that is you follow from top to bottom every time it says to do a green square. General things to keep in mind for everything, but especially general things to keep in mind for a green square. When you get to the right spot and you start, you start with 10 stitches. The red and orange squares each started with either 10 or eight. The first one you go, you start is gonna be 10 stitches. Each row builds by plus two stitches. So it goes 10, then 12, then 14, then 16. That should make it a little easier to keep track of. Here's one of my tips is be careful when you're counting. Only count your knit stitches. Do not count your wraps and turns. This can be hard. If you lose track of where you are, the wraps and turns get sucked in close to the stitches that you're trying to count. I often count, I, I can look back and I can see a gap. The wrap and turn creates a gap. If you count from the gap itself, instead of where you started knitting, your count will be off. You need to go one stitch inside that gap. If that doesn't make sense, hang on, because we're gonna show you. Okay, so each row, that gap I just mentioned, each row should take you one more stitch past the last gap created by the last wrap and turn on that side. So even though you're building by two stitches, you're going to stop knitting one stitch past the gap. That can be confusing. I recommend just being very sure of your count or knowing how to count to know where you are. But I really, my double check is I'm coming up on the gap. There's the gap. I still have one more stitch to go. Again, we will show you this. The last thing I wanted to point out, let's make sure it's in the frame. The knit instructions begin and end at, at a stitch marker. The knit instructions. And what I mean by that is the stitches you are actually knitting. You will knit your final stitch and hit a stitch marker on both the beginning row and the ending row. 
the wraps and turns are going to happen just past that stitch marker. So don't let that throw you off either. You know you're on track when you're knitting ends at a stitch marker. And another thing I would say is that you know you're on track if every time you hit a stitch marker in the middle of this, you're on an even number when you're counting. Even numbers will really come into play here. I will show you that as we go, both in the pictures and in what we're gonna do. Let's come over here. The first thing I did, this may look totally crazy, but this is a representation of if you're looking down at your knitting, it's only a few sections underneath, where, when you're knitting from the wrong side, where you're going to start. Now remember, the wrong side is what I like to call the, the dirty side, as opposed to the right side, being the clean side, clean lines on the right side. Let me show you that. Let me pull this off and I will show you when we get to the actual knitting too. I just don't want my stitches to fall off again. This is the right side. All the lines are clean. This is the wrong side. All the lines are what I call dirty. They're intermingled. I've seen one of these made with mohair. and Oh my gosh, this looks amazing on the wrong side actually. So on the wrong side, the lines aren't quite as clean as they might imply here. But the wrong side is how we move from bubble to bubble, from square to square. On this wrong side, let's add some colors in here just to make it a little clearer. We've got a red or orange square right here, this little teardrop shape. And then it gets thin and then it gets thick. The sections right before this, my Happy on right now is on row 15, what we're about to knit. So this is 14 right here. The one before it, let's color it a different color. I'm leaving uncolored the contrast, which on my current Papillon is cream. So it would look kind of white anyway. The little red and orange squares are a little further apart, the stripes leading up to where I am right now, where it's the instructions are calling for a green square for I think the first time, have bubbles that are, that are stacking and getting closer together. Again, I'll show you that on the real Papillon in the next section. So they've been, these little bubbles have been getting closer and closer together but we're at the spot where they can't get any closer together. These marks here are my stitch markers, which if you've placed them correctly, are 10 stitches apart between every single one of these. Like for example, between here and here, we have 10 stitches. And I've already drawn the arrow here. If we're coming in, if we're knitting along, if we are in the right spot to start our green square, it should be in this little valley. We've got mountains on either sides. So this valley, we should come all the way to the far side of the valley and this is where we're gonna start. So if you're looking at your piece saying, am I in the right place? You should be in the valley between the two bubbles the two hills from the section before and when you hit that stitch marker hopefully your count has worked out and you're ready to start and you'll do your first wrap and turn now i'm going to go through what happens with a green square with all the wraps and turns too but these are my instructions for how i do a wrap and turn some people do german short rows i love german short rows for stockinette but this is garter so I do a wrap and turn and I do a really intense wrap and turn that absolutely throttles the stitch that is being slipped. So the wrap, W and T, we're talking about a wrap and turn. And that also involves a slip stitch that is being wrapped. So I have these six steps. The yarn comes to the front between the needles. You slip the first stitch from the left needle to the right. The yarn goes to the back between the needles. You slip that stitch from the right back to the left. The yarn comes between the needles to the front again. You turn everything around and you're ready to go. The stitch that was slipped back and forth has been completely throttled. 
This is just the only place I'm going to write it out in this video. We will talk you through it many times in the next one. All right, so here's my chart of all the stitches hanging on the needle. And these thicker guys are my stitch markers. Now, when we come in, knitting along the wrong side, knitting our 58, getting a set up for what's going to happen. I'm going to be drawing over this, so just stick with me. The 58 should take us right up to a stitch marker. And then it says wrap and turn. So our wrap and turn before the green square gets started, we are going to wrap the stitch that is just on the other side and turn around to go back the other way. So let's see if I can mark this out without it looking too crazy and confusing. Remember, we don't count that one. There will be a gap right there between the wrap and the next stitch, but we're only counting what we knit. So the first thing we want to do is knit 10, which will take us to here. That's our 10 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But then we have to, we're going to have to slip stitch, stitch markers as we come to them. Our first wrap and turn. Anything circled is a wrap and turn. All right, so that's my first wrap and turn. The next set of instructions, 2, says to knit. 12. Remember I said these build by, by twos. You're adding two. That doesn't count. We start our count here. If we go 12, remember between the stitch markers is 10, 11, 12. One stitch past the wrap, we're going to right here. So step two starts from here, goes over there. And then we wrap the next stitch. Step three, which we'll start right here. Remember, don't count your wrap and turn. Three is to knit 14. So we have two, then we have 10, then one, two. We will end up right here. So the knit 14 takes us right there. We're going to wrap the next stitch. The fourth one, going to start right here is going to say to knit 16. So 1, 2, 10 makes 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It's going to end right there. And you're going to wrap the next one. Notice the wraps are two stitches apart. Our fifth is going to be to knit 18. And that's going to be one, two, three, four stitch marker. 10 more, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. It's going to end right here. And we're going to wrap the next stitch. Six is going to be to knit 20. And it's going to be four stitches, slip the stitch marker, 10 stitches, slip the stitch marker, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We're going to end right there. And we're going to wrap the next stitch. Remember, if this is looking totally confusing, jump ahead to where I'm doing it with real yarn. There you go. You'll be all set. Next, let's look at step seven which is going to be to knit 22. One, two, three, four, five, six, plus 10 is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. We're gonna end right here. We're gonna wrap the next stitch. Almost out of colors here. Eight is gonna be to knit 24. One, two, three, four, five, six, plus 10 is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We're going to end right there. We're going to wrap the next stitch. 
I'm gonna have to reuse early colors now. <laughs> this is nine. We're gonna knit 26. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Plus 10 is 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. We're gonna end right here. We're gonna wrap the next stitch. See how it's getting bigger on either side. 10 is gonna to be to knit 28. We're almost there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Plus 10 is 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Looks almost like we're done, but I bet we're on the wrong side, so we're not quite there. We're, but we are going to end right here. We have to wrap the next stitch. It'll be outside. This is your hint. You're getting close. You're getting very close. You're right outside. You've made it to the next stitch marker outside of the center where we started. There's one last one to go. There is step 11, which is to knit a full 30. It's going to be at this stitch marker where we start is right here. Remember, we don't count the wrap stitch. We start here. We go 10, 20, 30. We're going to end right there. And we're going to wrap this guy. And at that point, we've done the whole entire thing. We're ready to head back over to the next one. Let's do it with really yarn. All right, so here is my papillon. I have gotten really, really close to where I need to be for this. And you can see over here, we are in the valley between two of our little bubbles here, right? And when we move over, let me just get <laughs> some slack going here. Okay, probably have to do that again. But when we move over, when we're knitting over to wherever one of these box instructions starts, we're going to be on the wrong side. We're going to be on the dirty side, I like to call it. Clean, right side, dirty side. Now, in the instructions, you will see WS and RS used frequently to help you keep track. If you're at this point in the Papillon, you have done this quite a bit. This part of the instruction said to knit 58 and wrap and turn. Now there's eight down here, but then I can double check my count because I have these stitch markers, 10 stitches apart. So eight makes 18, 28, 38, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. Getting the weight of this up there. Okay, I'm at a stitch marker. But it, then it says to wrap and turn. I'm gonna slip my stitch marker to get ready for this. If you're ever right at a stitch marker when it tells you to wrap and turn, slip it over. Remember the instructions from just a little bit ago. Yarn to the front between the needles. Slip, always slip purlwise. We don't want to super twist things. Slip the stitch from your left needle to your right. Yarn to the back between the needles. Slip the stitch back over to the right. Yarn between the needles to the front. If you can see, we have totally throttled. It might be hard to see. We've totally throttled off this slip stitch. It's completely wrapped, 360 degrees. Then, we're gonna turn our work. And now we are ready to start the green square. First row is just to knit 10. Slip your markers as you come to them. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 takes me to another stitch marker. How nice. But now I've got to wrap and turn. I'm wrapping and turning right outside of those 10. So forward, slip, back, slip back, 
forward turn. If you always turn the same direction, it could get a little twisty, but it's consistent. You'll figure it out. Next row, wrong side, we are knitting 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're hitting our stitch marker. Watch out because sometimes those slip stitches want to jump. Eleven. Here's my gap. Twelve. Wrap and turn. I'm two stitches past the stitch marker. So wrap and turn forward, slip back, slip back over, forward, and turn. Remember it adds by twos. So either you can go by from here, we wanna knit 14, or if you take a look over here, here's my gap. That's my last wrap and turn right there. Here's my gap. I'm gonna go one beyond the gap if everything works out right. So let's give it a try. It's 14. One, two, slip your marker. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Slip your stitch marker. 13, there's my gap, 14. Do my wrap and turn forward, slip back, slip it back, forward. Turn my work, get ready to go back the other way. If I just did 14, and sometimes I got so much other stuff over here, it's trying to pull at my cords. So I'm gonna get that straightened out. I just did 14, so now I want to do 16. There's my gap. If this count works right, I should end up one past my gap. So here we go. One, two, slip my stitch marker. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I've hit my next stitch marker. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I'm at the gap. 16. Wrap and turn forward, slip, back, slip, forward. I can turn the whole thing around. Oop, trying to get my get my yarn there, help keep my tension. If I just did 16, my next one should be 18. There's my gap. I've got four over here, 10, one, two, three, four. Let's do it. One, two, three, four. Slip my stitch marker. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Slip my stitch marker. 15, 16, 17, I'm at the gap, 18. Wrap and turn, forward, slip, back, slip, forward. Turn my work around, get all the weight of it up on the table, so hopefully I can show you this stuff easier. That was 18, we're almost there, we're getting closer. Again, this is our middle 10. The gap is getting closer to the stitch marker over here. The gap I'm creating on this side is getting closer to the stitch marker. We're going back and forth over this center 10. We're gonna be done when we hit these outside stitch markers. So again, there's my gap. Let's see if 20 takes me one past it. And also remember, you're not counting if you ever have to go back and count, you're not counting the slip stitch. If you have to go back and count at the gap, I'll show you on this one when we get over there. Start by counting the first thing you're knitting. So we got one, two, three, four. Again, we hit these stitch markers on even numbers. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 
13, 14, stitch marker, 15, 16, 17, 18, coming up to that gap, 19, 20. One past the gap. Now, if I wasn't unsure and I had to go back and count this, if I look at this, here's my gap. I don't want to count this first stitch. That's my wrap and turn. It gets sucked in real close there to make this gap. Don't count that. If you count that, your stitch count will be wrong and you will be sad and you'll go, what did I do? So <laughs> don't count that. We're going to start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Right there. Time to wrap and turn. Forward, slip, back, slip, forward. That's our wrap. Here's our turn. Can't flop all this up there. So I'm doing this fairly quickly because I don't want to take up a ridiculous amount of your time with this video. Take your time when you are doing it. I am vamping until I can pull out enough yarn that I can keep going with this. Take your time. You don't want to go too fast and lose your count. I am just trying to keep this going so we're not here all night. And my contrast and my main color are getting all tangled here. But guess what? That's off camera. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's my wrap and turn. We just did 20. We got to do 22. Let's take a look. There's our gap. Let's see what happens if we do 22. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Slip my stitch marker. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That works out. 17, 18, 19, 20, my gap's right there, 21, 22, one past the gap. Now, if you're trying to knit along with me, I recommend freezing the video every time and doing your 22 stitches and catching up with me. Yarn forward, slip the stitch over, yarn back, slip the stitch back, yarn forward, turn everything. We just did 22. Remember they go up by two. Next is 24. There's our gap. Let's see if we hit it. 24, we're getting closer. One. Ooh, would help if I could keep my yarn straight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Time to wrap and turn. Forward, slip, back, slip back over, forward between the needles. That's our wrap and then our turn. Now, we just did 24, adding on two, 26. There's our gap over here. Let's see what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Slip the stitch marker. Remember, you want to hit those unevens. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, slip your stitch marker, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 takes us to the gap, 26. Wrap and turn, forward, slip, back, slip forward, turn your work around. If that was 26, 
The next one's 28. Remember, um, our drawing, 28 should take us. There's the gap. It's one stitch before a stitch marker. 28 should take us right to the stitch marker. We're going to pass two stitch markers and hit the third. Let's see how this goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey, there's my little knot. Look at that. Hang on for a second. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Slip your stitch marker. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 24, 25, 26, 27, there's the gap, 28 takes us right to a stitch marker, so we have to slip it to do our wrap and turn. Forward, back, slip, back, slip back over, forward, and turn. Last one, can you see what's happening here? We are filling in that bowl there, that valley. We wanna do 30, here's our gap. 10, 20, 30 should take us all the way over here. Let's do it. Slip our stitch marker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Slip the marker, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, if I could get it right, slip the stitch marker, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, here's the gap, 30. I'm ending at a stitch marker, but I need to do a wrap and turn, and that's gonna happen just on the other side. So I'm gonna slip the stitch marker over, forward, slip, back, slip, forward, turn. And I'm just gonna do a couple of stitches here just so I, if I stop right where a stitch marker is, that is just bad news. But I do want you to see what we just did. Let's see if I can get the weight of this up on the table so we can look at that. Here's what we just did. Some people say, oh, when I'm working on it, look how uneven my stitches are. Ah, it's still, it's going to look great in the end. And here is what a green square looks like. Instead of a little teardrop, like a red or an orange square, it's going to look like what Liz calls a bowl. It fills in the valley. There you go. And I believe the next instructions are to, uh, the scientific term is knit a whole bunch more because we need to get over to the other side over here next and fill in the valley that's over here. There's only two on this row, which is 15. One there and one here. So that was probably a longer video than you're expecting, but I didn't want to speed any of it up. I wanted to do it all with you, probably at a faster pace than most people are going to be doing this square. So like I said, go back and watch it again. And anytime that you are going slower than I am, that's okay. Pause the video, get to where you can catch up, that kind of thing. One of my phrases are, you rush a miracle, man, you get rotten miracles. I love quotes from Princess Bride. And you rush this, you're going to have to rip it out or tink it out. And sometimes that's a little complicated. Lifelines are your friends. If you want to use them, I recommend putting lifelines in any time that you do a contrast row. So you have something you can rip back to that doesn't have any wrap and turns in it. But if you follow those instructions, if you think about the even numbers, the knitting to one past the gap because you're always growing by two. It actually makes sense. You're going one past the wrap and turn, but it's two stitches past where you ended knitting last time you were on that side. 
Hopefully that will help you have a little bit more success. Let me know what else you'd like a video on. I am thinking maybe pretty, probably pretty soon if I get to it, I will do one on the blue square, which is what Liz calls the hats instead of the bowls. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Um, some of you may be well past that in your Papillons, but some may be starting your Papillon journeys. If you'd like to subscribe to this channel, that would be awesome and helpful. If you'd like to become a patron, you're going to see patrons. You can go to patreon.com slash sundragon and you can subscribe there for a low to whatever you care to offer monthly fee. Um, subscribing here doesn't cost anything and any support you can show is wonderful. I like talking to you guys. I like being able to help you all out. Let me know what I can do. I can't do a full pattern or a full um, lesson here. I can do bits and pieces. For a full lesson, we can do Zoom if you're not local. You can uh, schedule something at the shop. If you are local to Brevard, it is $15 a session at the shop. Those are about an hour right now. Um, online, sometimes they can go a little longer. It all depends on what's happening with my schedule and my energy levels and all that crazy stuff. Because, you know, life. But I want to keep you crafting if I can. And I want to help explain things if I can. And as I always say, may your crafting be filled with joy and confidence. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. This has been all the videos for you for the past few weeks, huh? Because when you're angry, oh, you got to clean what I just touched on. Huh? But when you're angry, I'm not filming. I'm running for cover. All right. Yeah, you're starting to get angry. All right. I'll let you be. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> bye. <laughs>